Welcome to the ministry of Joseph Ikoko, where the emphasis is on the word, the worship, and the warfare of the believer. I believe as you make ears for this message from the prophet of God, your life will never be the same. Stay tuned. In spite of the troublous times you've endured throughout the whole year, if you are here under the sound of my voice, that you and I ought to give God the praise from the depths of our hearts. Ah, from our hearts, from our hearts, let your praise arise, let it ascend, let it go up, let it go up, oh let it go up, let it go up, let it go up, go it up, go it up, not over Father, we give you glory. Oh God, we praise you. Free Wakuma will just come out from the depths of your hearts and let's worship God and thank God for his goodness, for his mercies, for his goodness, for his mercies. A God as we do, a God as we do, a God as we do. God has been good. Ay, 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 ay. Cabio. Yes, you Cabio. Yes, you
Thank you, professional crowd. Next year, your name will be Praise Me. Amen. But for now, we'll call you Pro Crowd. I say Pro Crowd. You don't say professional. Amen. How many are being blessed? I'm still interested in you finishing well. Amen. It's imperative that you finish well. Tell somebody, it's, it's important I finish well. It's weak. It's important. You see, you've eaten all the chicken, the turkey, the salmon, water. So you come up with some bass voice. <laughs> Tell someone sit beside you, it's important you finish well. Tell another person, it is important you finish well. I want the devil to know you want to finish well. Say, it is important that I finish well. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to Revelations chapter 2. We're still dwelling on what we've been preaching. And I trust God that you're going to be blessed and you're going to be armed. Tomorrow, 31st, I don't want you to miss the service. You're coming with your oil. And you're coming with a mini towel, not a macho towel. A mini towel. We start at 9 and we will finish at 12. Amen. Amen. Invite people, come and receive empowerment to move into the next year. Amen. Amen. Everybody needs to finish one life. And it's interesting how sometimes our strategies don't come to pass. It doesn't negate the fact that you will finish well. Amen. I said it doesn't negate the fact that you were born to finish well. Amen. In fact, finishing well is in your DNA. So it doesn't matter what the enemy does. I want someone to be laughing. Just start laughing and I'll tell you the reason. You see, the enemy ought to be ashamed that in spite of what he did, up until now you're still here. Amen. And if you're here, it means you will, you will finish well. Yeah. It's because I said if you're here, you will finish well. Yeah. If you're here, it means you will finish well. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Amen. Yeah. Uh, you need to clap well for Josh. And you also need to comment the sound. Man, the, sound the sound is really good these days. Gone were the days when we used to hear from this stuff. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Shall we please all read? Ready, go. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I like the last bit. On the stone, a name will be written. And in fact, your enemies won't know the name. Yes. I, I think I'm talking to all each other. Yes. You see, look at how far you've come. Look at what happened to you throughout the whole year. Near misses. And so sometimes you think you're not going to sail through. But for some strange, you see, people who don't believe in God will say for some strange reason. Um, but for those of us who believe in God, we know it's not any strange reason. It is because the word of God has been activated in our lives. And we are moving in the power of the word. And as we move in the power of the word, we will receive the results of the word. <laughs> uh, the devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. I don't have a mother-in-law, so I can say that. <laughs> Amen. Now let's go to 2 Kings chapter 2. I, I want to show you something. Uh, winning is your portion. Uh, the theme for, for today's word is winning is your portion. Tell someone, sit beside you, winning is your portion. Is your portion. Tell another person, you were born to win. You were born to win. Oh, I, 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 can't, I can't hear you. Tell another person, you were born. You were born. Uh, stretch it, say you were born. You were born. Not to lose. To win. win. Let's go to Second Kings chapter two. It's a uh, 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 Second Kings chapter two. It's kind of long, but I'm going to read from verse one through to ten. So open your ears and listen whilst I speak the British English. Second Kings chapter two, one through to ten. And it 
came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elisha said unto him, Elijah said unto Elisha, Tell me here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I would not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Three. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Four. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tell me here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. Six. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here. For the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. Seven. And the fifty men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view a fire of the stood by Jordan. Eight. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and tighter. So they went to, they too went over on dry ground. Nine. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Amen. Ten, and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be unto thee. But if not, it shall not be. And when it, and it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared the chariot of fire and horses of fire, and part of them all the son of Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. To Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and broke them in two pieces. 13. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Father, this is your word. Bless you. Bless you. Lord, touch the hearts of your people. As your word comes, it's been designed for them. Let them be a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You see, we belong to a society which is, if you're not careful, it has set aside a group of people I call them the prima donors. It's like they were born and uh, they were just born to win. But in reality, life gives everybody an opportunity to win. Amen? Amen. There are no special human beings created by God other than you and I. We are equally special. However, an individual's ability to heed instruction is what uh, determines how they fare well in life. Adam, the fruit, you can eat every fruit in the garden. But of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, of, 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 of the tree of knowledge of evil and of good, you shall not touch it. It was a, an instruction given to Adam so that he was going to fare well. Amen. How you turn up in life. In as much as sometimes everybody needs the necessary push in life to get to a certain place. But how you turn up in life is more a personal journey. Life is not like the lotto or lottery or lotto numbers where you, you depend on luck. In fact, when you become a child of God, I was listening to my, my tape and I realized that I like using the word in fact. So I'm going to change the word in fact and make the fact in or factory. <laughs> Life is not like the lottery where you depend on luck. See people, there is nothing like luck in life. It's just the chosen word death uh, to make you feel like, oh, okay, okay. But in reality, if you're a child of God, uh, you depend on faith. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. 
for my head the others obtain a good report faith becomes your power force which drives you to the place God has determined for your life nobody was born to win but people make up their minds to win winning is an intent tell somebody you need an intention you need to be, uh, you need to have an intent. And uh, 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 the word intent simply, I think it means uh, to decide. Amen. To decide that against all odds, in spite, regardless, nevertheless, of what I go through, I am going to win. And so everybody's got to make up their minds that in the year 2013, Whatever is lacking can no longer lack. You didn't hear my Niger prophet. You see, I said whatever is lacking has no right to lack anymore. Because you see, the anointing which you'll be carrying into the year 2013 will cause that which is delayed in your life to run with enough power to come into your life. You are born to win. And nothing can stop you Put your hand on your chest. Just put your hand. I promise on my honor to be faithful and loyal to God. I uh, say this unto me. I pledge today. It's weak. I said I pledge today. To win a life. I pledge today. That I'm going to win a life. Put your lovely hands down. When it is an intent. Winning is an intent. And it doesn't matter how many times we prophesy over your lives. It doesn't matter how many times we allow you to fast and pray if you don't make up your mind. The whole thing is in here. Whoever you are going to be is not what you are now. It started as a thought. It started as a thought. It started as a thought. And then by virtue of the thought, you began to process how, the how to. Everybody wants to know the how to in life. How to finish well. How to, I, I blog, I blog, and I, I, as I keep blogging over the years, I found out that the, the strategy, the only way to get people to come to my blog is to provide solutions. Amen. Amen. And so what I do is three strategies to win. Three secrets of great people. If you have time, you can go to my blog, be elevated, the blogspot.com. Quick. Amen. How to. How to. Now, we've read two scriptures. One gives us the conclusion. Better the end of a month than the beginning thereof. From the beginning, that's why I intentionally led us to read Revelation because Revelation, the scripture we read, talks about what will happen to people who win, what will happen to people who overcome. It didn't actually talk about the processes. One of the mistakes I think we used to do as pastors is just to talk about you're going to win, you will win, you will win, you will win, and people are like, Amen, Amen, and they finish. And they don't know how to win. So when I realized that I was giving you a conclusion rather than giving you the processes and leading you straight into how it's going to happen, I changed the way I preach. And so now we're going to 2 Kings chapter 2. Elisha. I'm, I'm just going to finish real quick. Elisha is the servant of the prophet Elijah. There were other prophets along the way. Elisha knew in his spirit that God was about to take Elijah away. The capacity or the anointing that Elijah carries. There was no way Elisha was going to allow him to take such an anointing away. But you see people, nothing of God comes easily. <laughs> I, I, I look at people and, oh, oh, pastor, my prayer is that God will bless me. And the person doesn't fast. They don't pray. If wishes were horses, 
beggars would have written them. If you see any great man in life, know that they've gone through the processes, they've paid the price, sometimes they fell, and they got up, they fell, they got up until they became so resolute and focused on the price ahead. Now, no, no, you see Jesus carrying the cross. Don't forget, he also needed to be elevated. When he was in the, on, on, on earth, he was known as Jesus. But after the cross, he was known as the Lord Jesus Christ. He had to carry the 70 pound cross. He had to be beaten so that the writer says in Isaiah 53, when we behold him, not what beside him, because his facade had changed. People he had healed had to spit on him. People had to accuse him falsely. Why? Because of the price. If it's in your blood, then you're going to win. Men can say what they want to say. People can beat you anyway. They can try and lock your doors. When God gets ready, you will get up there. I said you will get up there. I said you will get up there. Now Elijah told Elisha from Gilgal, stay. Now, if you're prophetic enough, you understand that Gilgal biblically means the Lord rolling away your shame. In the year 2013, as you go through the processes to be a winner, if you are at your Gilgal, as the prophet of God, I prophesy that God should roll away your shame. Oh, I'm not hearing you. I said in the year 2013, the vision is clear. The purpose is clear. You know what you desire. If you've got into a station called Gilgal, and there's disgrace, and all around the people have been ridiculing, and people have been laughing at you, just as Elisha did not stay at Gilgal, but took a step and went ahead with the prophet Elijah, I prophesy that God should roll away your disgrace. On your left, may God roll away your sin. Everything that has cloud your life, that is stopping your sun from shining. I command that thing to move in the name of Jesus. Because you were born to win. And I've just come to understand that what is your time is your time. I said, what is your time is your time. Ah, I see somebody, it's time coming up in the year 2013. You will begin to assess your breakthrough in January 2013 because it's your time. You are born to win. Winning is in your blood. The winning streak is in your blood. You can't lose. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If someone is sitting beside you, tell that person, you can't lose. Not that you have a way, you can't lose. Losing is not your portion. Winning is your portion. Stay in Gilgal because the Lord has told me. God has got a business with me. He said, I know I need something from you. Listen. If you're paying the price for your breakthrough, keep paying that price. Let nobody tell you otherwise. You know what God has said to your mind. You know what God has already spoken to you. I love quoting Isaiah 50. It says that morning by morning the Lord wakened at my ear. That he may give me a word and season to speak. You see, if God gives you a word concerning other people, know that he will also give you a word concerning your life. Staying in Gilgal, in my sin, I've been through it 20 years. People have laughed at me enough. I've endured this sickness enough. And if I have an opportunity to move one step, stay back, I'm moving forward. Because people who move forward are people who desire to win. And because God has told me to tell you that 2013 is your year, I say don't stay where you are. Don't allow where you are to take you. Keep moving forward because your victory is ahead. Keep moving forward, let nothing stop you. Uh, you're only going to stop when you get to the point. Don't forget he who overcomes will eat of the hidden man. I learned something a few years ago. After everyone struggles and struggles and struggles and they possess their breakthrough, their youth is renewed like that of the eagle. Oh, yes, 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 yes. After everyone has gone through so much and they get to the place, God has 
system for their life and they're broken through, guess what happens? The youth is renewed like that of the eagle. Your sweat will not be in vain. Your struggle will not be in vain. Your prayer will not be in vain. Your offering will not be in vain. Your fasting will not be in vain. The studying of the word will not be in vain. They all came together to bring you to the place when you have enough capacity to move away from your yoga, touch somebody and tell them, I'm moving away from yoga. Again, tell them, I'm moving away from my shame. I'm moving away from my shame. Because he's turned my mother into dancing. His left hand. Ah, today, may God turn your mother into dancing. I said, may God turn your mother into dancing. You were born to win. Elijah. Elisha if you're not going to stay in your shame I'm moving a step further when I came to London I used to preach your soul grandpa have I moved a step further there's been a great change I'm still looking fine now I have insight listen my grandfather let say that and now I talk sense <laughs> Guess what? When God has a winning place for you, He doesn't allow you to stay. Some of us are going to go through agitation. God is not interested in you staying at the same place. So you see, that He's going to create chaos in the place you want to stay. This is not your portion. This is not your place. You're trying to stay there. And God is saying, no, 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 no. So you see, as you're trying to figure out how you're going to build in a place God is saying, move forward, He causes people to come and create. Isaac had to dig. He dug the first row. The people said, No, we want this one. He dug until he got to Rehoboth. And God said, Rehoboth, which is the house of God, this is your portion. You see, the agitation you're going through, things not connected the way you want them to. It is God. He doesn't want you to stay where you are. You're moving away from Gilgal. Why do you want to build in Gilgal? Your victory is when you cross over the Jordan. Somebody will cross over the Jordan. Yeah. You will not cross 20, uh, 2012 with your sickness. You will not cross 2012 with your pain. You will not cross 2012 with your anxiety. It is time that you also jump out that I'm a winner. And the winner you will be as long as God is. Bethel. And the Bible said they go to Bethel. Which is the house of God. He said remain in the house of God. Because I have a business with God. I said, listen, we come into God's house to receive. And when we receive the revelation, we have to go out there and win. And it's no accident that you have Sunday being the last day. Or is that the beginning of the, the last day? The last day. Why? Because when you receive your revelation, Monday is waiting for you to win over. Tuesday is waiting for you to win over. Wednesday is waiting for you to win over. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you come back on Sunday and you receive a dose. Listen, they got to Bethel. He wanted them to stay in Bethel. He said, no, I, I just come into the house of God to receive my revelation. Once I catch my revelation, I don't have to stay in here. I've got to move with the power which I've received. They couldn't say in Bethel because this is the way the victory was coming from. He said they moved on and he said, let us go. And as they kept going, the sons of the prophet. Now you read as you read through, you find out that in every place there were people. There were people. There were people ready to fight so that you don't move forward. You see, most of you, some of you move from churches to churches. Be careful. Elisha was about to go to God. Elisha had got the revelation. Elisha wanted what was on Elijah. He wasn't only going to look for a single portion. He wanted a double portion. Mm. Now the sons of the prophet and every church were there. Do you know your master is going to be taken away? He told them, keep your peace. I don't need confusion. I don't need you to be telling me this. And my pastor is saying this. And 
and this pastor is also saying this I'm just going to wait before God because those who wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength they shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like the eagle once a person learns how to wait and waits at a particular place God comes in and when God comes he comes with all power and when he gives you that power and you can soar like the eagle and you will go places listen to me people as you move into the year 2013 your wings are ready I said your wings are ready I see some people flapping their wings they're about to soar places you couldn't go I see you going there places you couldn't go I see you going there doors that wouldn't open I see those doors open the anointing you couldn't receive I see you having that anointing the places your tree your feet couldn't tread you see, I see you treading it where so many souls of your feet are tread it is yours Bethel I can't stay in Bethel the sons of the prophet came. Do you know? Like as if he didn't know. You see, I, 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 I was assured. And I have been assured. And I can confidently tell you people, I know who I am right now. Yeah. And I know where I'm going. Yeah. That's why I dress in a particular way. Yeah. That's why I read the kind of books I read. That's why I connect to the sort of people I connect to. Yeah. You see, nobody can tell me otherwise. Oh yes, 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 yes. There comes a point in your Christian walk that you've got to be so assured. Let them call you to know. Tell them you know where you are going. You know where you're going. You know where you're going. Ah, do you know your master is going to be taken away? I know. You're going to get people who will tell you, you've been in that church too long. If God was going to move, he would have moved. Wait. Wait. in the morning. But your healing cometh in the morning. Your promotion cometh in the morning. Your upliftment cometh in the morning. Your open doors cometh in the morning. At night I'm going to go through the pain. The pain. The pain of being alone. The pain of everyone I'm rejecting it and I feel it dejected it. Everyone castigating it. Casting insinuations here and there. But you know what? When my morning comes I would have joy because I was born to win. Yes. And winning is my portion. Yes. Uh, am I speaking to somebody? Yes. Talk somebody and tell them, winning is your portion. Yes. Another person, winning is your portion. Yes. Then they got to Jericho. Is that a retiree here? In Jericho. Two things about Jericho. When the Israelites got to Jericho, it was gone. That brought the walls down. It wasn't mine. Lift up your right hand. Let me prophesy to you. Listen. I don't know what you've got to do in your life. But if you've got to a place where things are tough. I demand and I command. Heaven to come and press down the walls. I said I demand and I command. Heaven to come and press down the walls. If you've got into your Jericho. May God himself come. And pull those walls down. You can put your hands down. Got to Jericho. Joshua prophesied when they got to Jericho that anybody that builds the walls of Jericho will do so with his first one. And he will conclude it with his second. Second Kings, I think, chapter 16. Yeah. Finish the wall. It is a place where prophetic pronunciations come to place. Listen. Even as you go through your Jericho, be alert for the fulfillment of God's word. You see, because I've come to understand that God did not take Daniel out of the lion's den. It was in the lion's den that God closed the mouth of the lions. Some of you, you're going through the Daniel experience. You expected God to come out of Zion and redeem you. But God is saying, in the midst of the disgrace, you will see my grace. I said, in the midst of the disgrace, you will see my grace. In the midst of your pain, you will see my prosperity. And Jericho, the second thing that happened was that uh, 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 Joshua prophesied. The walls 
Anybody that builds a second or stand in Jericho, worship. Worship was what brought the victory, not for you. Worship. And they went around the wall and they kept worshiping God. I would want to urge and encourage somebody who comes to church and keeps worshiping. Even if you don't know how to pray, keep worshiping. Even if you can't sing the song, mind the song. Uh, I see some people. Well, when they put the song on, sometimes you look at some people's face, you don't want to. Because the song is going that way and they also that way. May God bring you to your Jericho. Where you have supernatural worship and you begin to sing. You can't stay in Jericho. It's that place for you. Some of us are so used to enjoy the little victory that comes from it when God has a bigger one coming. Amen. Amen. In the year 2013, may God open your eyes to the reality Amen. that you will see that your victory is not in Jericho. And there too the sons of the prophet came. But it wasn't where Elisha was about to receive his breakthrough. The only time believers had the fullness of Jesus' power was when he went to the cross and the blood was shed. And as long as you are in sin, you can't operate in the fullness of the anointing of God. And so the blood that was shed on the cross paved the way for any human being, any ordinary person, to become an extraordinary person. I see some extraordinary people here in the name of Jesus. They got to Jordan and they were about to cross the Jordan. He said, stay behind Jordan. But Jordan was not the place of the miracle. And they walked forward. Elijah took his mantle, wrapped the of the waters, and divided. The chariots of fire came for Elijah and Elisha kept trying. But... He got that which God had destined him for. Listen, I look at your face and I see winning. I look at your face and I see winning. I look at the steps you have taken and it's taking you to the place God has destined for your life. You didn't hear me. I can feel your palms and those hands, whatever they touch, will prosper in the name of Jesus. I look at your eyes and they will see only the victory of God. I said I look at your eyes and I can only see the victory of God. I can, I'm speaking into your ears and I can only hear you listening to the prophetic of God. Because God's time is now and he who overcomes shall be given the hidden manner that of life. When they eat it, they won't die. And they'll be given a stone with a name which they only will know the name. I hear the name of victory. I hear the name of prosperity. I hear the name of success. I hear the name of healing. I hear the name of promotion. I hear the name of upliftment. I hear the name of eternal world. God has destined you for the winning streak. And winning you shall win.
thus saith the Lord to his anointed Cyrus. Whose right hand? Isaiah 45, son. Verse 1 through. Have I blessed somebody? Yes. God bless you. This is what the Lord said to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip off. King, stand on your feet, people, please. Let's do some spiritual exercise. I don't want you to joke with this. You were born to win, and nothing can stop your winning. In fact, you haven't seen anything yet. What you're seeing now is a tip of the iceberg. Greater things and mighty things will the Lord do in your life. If only you can believe. If only you can believe. This is what the Lord said to his anointed. To Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of. I take hold of to subdue before him and to strip kings of the armor to open doors before him. Now lift up your right hand. Whatever I say, please repeat. Say in the name of Jesus. And speak. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anything that has become a king before me. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I subdue that kingdom. As we say in the name of Jesus. Anything that has become a king before me. Right now. It is subdued. It is subdued. It is subdued. It is subdued. Number two. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Any closed door. Before me. Any closed door. Before my life. Right now. I command it to open. 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 Anything which is a mountain. Any mountain before my life, I subdue that mountain. I command that mountain to be subdued. To be subdued. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. And I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bags of iron. Three. And I will give you the treasures of darkness. That which is yours are two sides to it. And especially, may you receive that which is lost out of your life in the name of Jesus. You didn't hear me. Let me go here. So they know what I'm talking about. I said that which you've lost along the way and is hidden in darkness. May you receive your portion. blessed by this message put it to good use and watch the word of God change your life
You can visit us on the web at www.josephacorcoran.org Send us an email at info at josephacorcoran.org God richly bless you. You are and we left you high and all along. We know that you are king.